Hey everyone, this is Chris with How to Make Games, and today we are going to talk about how to do a sort of point-and-click adventure game, uh, the basic mechanics on um, how to do the actual pointing and clicking in that genre in GDevelop. So uh, I set up something very basic. Um, essentially what's going to happen, and I'll actually just show you, um, is wherever you put your mouse, it's just going to, if you click it, the character runs there. I'm sure you guys have played games like this before. So obviously you can go further out. You can even uh, make the camera wider. I would actually suggest that in this case. Um, I did slap a couple effects on here just because it made me happy. Um, I put a little bit of bloom and a little bit of god ray coming through the top here. I definitely set up the atmosphere. I just put some sounds in there. So made it a little less bland to look at and listen to. So. Anyway, let me show you how I did this. So, um, first thing I want to let you know, I tried to use scene variables and um, for the whole solution here. It ended up being more of a headache than it would have been to just use an object to produce this effect. So, all I've done is just ignore debug. That was for me trying to figure out everything. Uh, I created an object called WayP, and that is a shorthand for waypoint. And all this does is, here I'll actually show you, and I'll walk you through all, everything on here as far as the events go. So let's control X, cut that action out of that event so that we can see when the black box appears. So as you can see, it's a little less magical now because you can kind of see what's going on. So um, we're just creating a square and having the player run to it every time. So, hold F4, that closes windows automatically. Let's go ahead and paste that back in. And um, so let me show you how I did this. So first, this is all the normal stuff. So things you'll normally have. So uh, a smooth camera on the x-axis. In this case, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of change in the y-axis. And um, I went ahead and used the platforming rules uh, to make it simple, of course, you can actually use the same method on a top-down as well. So if you're doing that kind of game, this same method will work for you as well. Um, so I'm going to go and close this because this doesn't really matter. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I went ahead and notated it for you guys. So the first thing is this event creates the waypoint. So anytime you click the left mouse button, or in this case, you can also do touch, that works as well. If it's a, um, a mobile game trigger once and then you want it to delete the previous waypoint first and I remember guys in one of my other tutorials I talked about different tips on making sure that uh, you guys don't get stuck on anything one of them is going to be making sure that your actions are in the correct order and events as well I mean however order you fire these in GDevelop is going to look at it that way because that's the way code is written so delete the first waypoint or previous waypoint and then I want you to create another one, right? And it's going to be on the uh, mouse's X. So that means wherever your mouse is on the screen, uh, I don't think you guys can see my mouse, but if you're going left to right, uh, even if your mouse is higher than the player, it's just going to appear on wherever the X position is for the mouse. And then as for the Y, we're using the player Y. So that means that, um, remember when you saw the, the black square appear always right on the eye level of the player. That's why we're using the player Y. And I'll tell you why here in a second. No pun intended. Um, and of course, I just put a sound in there for any time you, you do click so that it just kind of fun just to click around. Um, and then after that action, you delete the waypoint if it's overlapping with a solid fixture. So in this case, like if we, so that's pretty easy, waypoint and collision with floor, delete waypoint. So. Um, kind of cancels out anything. So like, let's say if I drag some floor in here and we're just gonna let it be visible to you guys so it can be obvious what's going on here, right? Um, if you try to click in here, you'll get the sound effect, but your player's not gonna go anywhere. See, if you go past it, nothing. So if you guys add any sort of um, obstacles there there you go um, obviously if you wanted her to jump over it you could make an event for that too uh, I didn't have time to go into that but 
because I'm not trying to make a full in-depth game here, but uh, that would be possible as well. You might want to use the pathfinding uh, behavior for that. You could probably double that up with the platform behavior or the top-down behavior, whichever. Um, or you can just do it with a couple other events as well, whichever you prefer. Uh, wherever I can do a behavior, I try to, um, as long as it, I don't think it's going to be reused too much. Obviously, the player isn't, there's not normally one than one copy of the player, so you can kind of get away with that for behaviors. You don't want to bog down your, your computer too much, or the player's computer, for that matter. Anyway, so that's what that does. Uh, move to waypoint. So this is the magic here, right? So first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a event that's going to encase the rest of them, okay? And then you're going to put the number of waypoint objects is greater than zero, right? That you want the computer to check and see, hey, is there a waypoint in the, the entire scene, right? And then you can put hide right here so that way your player doesn't see it unless you want them to. You, I mean, I don't know what you're doing, but uh, the next one is going to be the exposition of player is less than waypoint X. So that means that is the waypoint ahead of the player? If it is, simulate pressing right for player. Like I said, I use the platformer behavior for this, so uh, that makes it very easy for me. All I have to do is just copy paste a couple things, right? So that would be simulating right for player, and then I want you to flip it. So that's very easy to tell it, hey, look, Make sure you um, <laughs> make sure that the platformer is facing the right direction. It would look really weird if she started moon running the other way if you click left, which in this instance she would if you didn't have flip horizontally on as yes here. So um, basically, same thing here. If the exposition of player is less than, I'm sorry, greater than. This was less than. It's greater than. Uh, it's really early. It's like seven in the morning right now. So you guys have to forgive me. So if the player X is greater than the waypoint X, then simulate left. So uh, lots of inverts there. And then beneath here we have this right here. It says deletes and captures exposition of soon to be previous waypoint. So um, you guys might have use for um, seeing where the last position of the player was. Uh, previous to the next waypoint. So in this instance, all I did is say, hey, if the distance to waypoint is below 25, um, you're going to delete the, the waypoint. So that means anytime the player gets close to the waypoint, it's going to delete it. I found if you try to use collision, it doesn't work. So I went ahead and did distance since it was kind of uh, easier for the engine to keep up with that. Um, also, change the scene variable previous click x position set to waypoint x so do this first do this action first and then delete the waypoint and all i'm doing here and i've actually got i can just unhide my debug layer here so you guys can see the text so basically anytime you click anywhere as soon as she gets there the position it sets so then if you travel the last position that was last held is there. Very simple. So if you guys, for whatever reason, figured, may hey, maybe they need to see the last position that the player was at, there you go. You can compare them. So uh, with that being said, uh, if you guys have any questions on this or if you want to see more on this, um, or if you want to expand on it, maybe you think that um, it, it could have been done in, in a, a more simple fashion, uh, comment down below if you have any further ideas on this or any further ideas on videos or anything like that. Please comment below, uh, like, and subscribe if this really helped you. So that way I can keep helping you guys out. We can help each other. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. Bye.